to Hoover Airport right now in Kathmandu and, and hoping people won't stare at me, as they normally do, for doing something that's socially quite conspicuous and to basically antisocial, but not as antisocial as many things you might, might imagine, you know, just by like, uh, like doing a very, very rude uh, fart um, that isn't conspicuous in a sense attached to the person when it's say plays like the mosh pit. But I digress. Um, uh, I think it's about time I got together something that happened about four days ago. It just happened. Things happened, don't they? Tragic nature of phenomenon. Are we passive? Do things happen to us? Or do we have them with them? Or is it an independent combination? Uh, of destiny and free will, we interact with it all. So always six of one and half a dozen of the other. Another digression, but perhaps important to me and you at this time. Uh, and here I am in Kathmandu Airport. What happened a few about four days ago is I trekked up a mountain with three other people. And then we met with another three people on the way up one or two that they knew and we teamed up with seven of us and uh, we ultimately got to the snow line which was about 3,300 metres above sea level in relation to Ben Nevis that's quite quite high because Ben Nevis is 1,345 metres above sea level but our starting point was uh, much much higher than you would get with Ben Nevis uh, and the start of the sea level we started uh, 50 feet above sea level. So the, uh, the net height that we climbed was about the same as Ben Nervous. Okay, good statistics, clear enough for you. Um, we stayed in the shepherd's hut at the top, at the top of the snow line, uh, where there, there was a static storm and static electricity sent shocks through our body. It's a mild electric shock that we felt all through our body. Uh, especially in our follicles, every follicle is static electricity. So I hope that somehow I think it's my best. Uh, and maybe some sort of bionic superpower, which I didn't have before. So anyway, uh, enjoy this. It was uh, quite an adventure that I squeezed in before, um, about a week or two before, back to the UK. What would you do right now when you don't have a phone? Have a conversation? It's like waiting for a people. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I can show you. It's a very nice view. Wow. It was good, but yeah. I think like I'll eat it when I'll be hungry. <laughs> but for a dessert, it's like... Oh, Pavel has, has seen me eating dessert, so... <laughs> All right, back there. I think we're about 60% about of the way up to Triand, and you can still just about make out the famous cricket ground. more nicer pools there. Yeah, it's really yeah. nice. To, it's a little bit tricky to go there, but it's really nice. What there is up here 
there's lots of beautiful rhododendrons, mainly this colour. Some of them are more pink. And also, there are regular flurries of cabbage white butterflies. There's a couple, a couple there. It's, it's paradisical. Also, so high up, I really am still surprised by, by regular pit stops. And we are going to be twice the height of Ben Nevis soon, and uh, well over twice the height. And there's a camp up there with plenty of food. This is Triand, named after a temple that's just a little bit up the hill. Uh, this story's in the background right now when I'm recording this voiceover. It's a celebration of New Year in Nepal, which is uh, some time after this was re recorded. That's relevant but irrelevant information. Mm -hmm. Is that nice? Show that. Oh. So I've made it up to Triand with Powell, Melina, and and yours. I'm at 2,875 metres above sea level, but we did actually start from about 1,750. So the amount we've climbed is less than you'd climb to get to the top of Ben Nevis. There's some figures for you. This is Triand. It's been, well, not even up at the snow line, but we will be soon. Um, about an hour and a half's walk. We're either going to stay overnight here in a tent or a shepherd's hut or by the snow line. Um, there's a, there, there's a, a figure here uh, of, of Hanuman. Hanuman, very strong uh, monkey god. He took an entire mountain down to Sri Lanka, so the story goes, to save um, Rama's brother. Uh, the doctor said there needs to be a specific spice, uh, no, herb, um, that's a flower and it's growing in the Himalayas. He, he couldn't find it. He couldn't figure out which one it was. So he decided to take it up an entire mountain. And down, down there, there's a, there's a, a Shiva's trident. Beautiful though, isn't it? Yeah. I'm so excited about Nepal for some reason. Um, so there are, there are like... I feel like I want to attend and no? put it when I, like where I want. Yeah. Sanjo! 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 Yes! Yes! And my breath is back. Sometimes you need to grow to each other, you know? To find the real thing. I don't know how altitude we are, but we're flipping high. That's how high we are. Yeah. And actually, here, right? And actually, we're, we're high on the endorphins as well. But there's a temple up there, because the place to reach enlightenment has always been up a mountain. It really it has, or by the water, isn't it? Oh, look at that sky. I'm Nama Shiva.
Hotte. Here we see some static electricity. Oh, it's not sharp. Electricity. With the clouds there. Oh, it's supposed to be hanging out. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I'd love to see what it looks like when you play it back. <laughs> this insane thing just happened. We were all walking along and we suddenly felt a flash of electricity. We felt a flash of electricity. The hairs on our arms stood on end. And I wonder what those crows are up to. Suddenly lots of crows going. Chase it, running away from this storm. <sighs> Can you hear that? <sighs> we are nearly at where we're going to be camping tonight. <laughs> How's this for dramatic? There's sleet and hail, you know, the little polystyrene ball tail, and you can see it on my forehead, and you can feel the electricity. The sky is beginning to bruise, night will fall, and we shall be forced to camp. Yay! This is really slippery, thank you for letting me know. And here we are. The snow line, some shelter, oh. and those polystyrene balls of hail. Here we are. We're nearly there. Nearly there now. Maybe doing this. If we're lucky, any second, a lightning bolt will strike this. <laughs> you hear this thing? I just see the ecstatic electricity, Poof, like a flash. You can feel it all in your hair and all along your arm. And this says, "Welcome to Himalayan Quest Caf Camp Cafe," and I think. That is where we're going to be staying tonight. And we're going to be in there, listening to the rain on the tarpaulin. No, like there, it was me. I didn't try, but I didn't give you, you know. One, two, three, four. You don't want tea. No tea for me, yes. Two, two, four, two, three, four. Yeah, yes, please. Calm down a bit now. Oh, it's beautiful. This tree was struck by lightning. So you get the signal here. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> That's a signal rock. <laughs> oh. <sighs> First time I have felt properly cold in India, but of course there are cold places, and it's I've got a cold nose, I've got cold toes. I'm not wearing any socks because I've got these sandals. But yeah, a long way away, 
has incessant honking and noise. Let me hear. To be free, singing with the birds and swimming in the sea. Singing with the crows and swimming in the snow. Well, last night I slept in here. Well, slept is a bit of an exaggeration. I don't think I had any REM sleep. But um, it was cold, it was hard, I had two thin pieces of foam. My sleeping bag wasn't, didn't feel long enough, uh, and it had no pillow, um, so it was a struggle. But now, actually, I can feel the warmth on my face. Um, this is beginning to defrost uh, a little, uh, and what has woken woken us up is that is that Raven over there has uh, been teaching us a bit of hacker. Oh yes, she is an authentic Maori. Um, but Santa, our host, was sitting there a little bit confused. We tried to explain to him what a hacker was. You know. But anyway, anyway, I don't mind the fact we didn't sleep. I'm going to have some paratha for breakfast now. Everyone seems to be in fine fettle. And uh, two people are going to stay over. And we're going to be trekking back down to Darren Cart today, which will be much quicker. But we've got this plan of make, taking a roundabout route. It'll be an adventure. <laughs> She's been doing some narration now. <laughs> this is Raven, who's just taught us the hacker. A bottle of water costs 70 rupees or 70p as opposed to 20 rupees or 30 rupees and, and this is the reason why, which is fair enough really, isn't it? And we do see a lot of the, the mule dung on the path on the way up. <laughs> Now then, my phone ran out of battery and my power bank was flat as well. So much of the journey on the way down wasn't recorded. What I can say was that I was absolutely shattered the next day because I'd barely slept and I had 10 hours sleep and I had a very comfortable bed actually. But on the way down, we went, down, we went through, um, we, we approached the top part of Darumcot, um, and uh, also a place called Galu. Um, and me and Melina and I, we went our separate ways then. Uh, it was around that time that the heavens absolutely opened down there. A storm came in that started up the mountain, but we missed it. So I did pity those people, but we did, who were at the top or were still going up. We met a few on the way down. And we said, there's a storm coming. Some decided to turn around, some decided to plod on. 
you do the information what you want, don't you? And you learn whichever way you need to learn. Um, yeah, we all do. But yeah, the heavens opened. Um, and yeah, yeah, I sheltered in a cafe. And there was a short power cut. Uh, but I had a hell of a workout. And a couple of days later, I was still aching. <laughs>